Uncle Al, what are you doing? Well, we're uh, we're hoping today that we're going to get somewhere with this uh, piece of oak. I saw an idea years and years ago about a dugout throne, and then this piece of timber turned up. And uh, let's hope you're not filming an industrial accident here. We're going to do one side and then try and match it onto the other side. Let's see what happens. This is brute force and ignorance kind of furniture, I think. It's, you know, it's labor intensive. Um, you know, today we like to think we work smart. You know, 2000 years ago, someone might have had the time, you know, to sit and to, to, you know, to literally claw this out with a flint tool and, you know, create this chair. You know, we're, we're kind of returning to that with modern tools, certainly, but this is a, this is a labor intensive way of doing things. But what other way is there? So let's just get on with it, eh? <laughs> I don't know why I start these things sometimes. <laughs> We're going to stop for a drink, aren't we? Yeah. Yeah. Maybe clean your face. <laughs> Go. We have a fault pretty much running straight through this piece of timber. Um, the wood itself has protected itself with this ridge. You can also see the other cracks coming through. So what we're going to do is, if we come around the front here, um, I think we're going to hand make some steel butterflies, hand make some rivets and staple those cracks together at the front.
you just can't afford to buy all the fittings you like, you can't get some of them, it's better to make them yourself, you know, if, you, if you're going to enter into this and you're doing it yourself, you get the pleasure out of making them yourself. You know, th this is a rough old rivet when it's finished. This isn't something that, you know, some industrialist is going to buy off me and make an iron bridge. You know, this is this is a rough hand-forged rivet, but it does the job. They look fantastic. They even look better for being all higgledy-piggledy and not uniform. You know, a thousand years ago when a some, you know, a Viking blacksmith was making rivets, he, you know, he didn't give a monkeys if, you know, this wasn't absolutely perfect, if this wasn't formed in a, you know, a puncher machine, you know, it's it's meant to look rustic, it's meant to look handmade, and, you know, they do when they're done. Which is going to do what we want it to do? Which is going to look like a thousand year old chair? It isn't going to be the coach bolt. It's going to be this. Well, we hope it's going to be this. <laughs>
did lose a couple there, but I think on the whole, we should be all right with that. So let's take that and put it somewhere safe. Well, we're not going to cut out the seat just yet. We've got it all marked up, it's ready to go. Um, now what we need to do is create the rebate for the, um, for the seat to sit into. So we're going to cut a little rebate into our seat to that line. Um, what? Don't look at me. What? Look in here. Oh right. All your fans. Oh yeah. <laughs> that guy. <laughs> Make some sawdust. What's the skinny? Uh, no, it's just we, I left this tag on because I wanted to It was very difficult to form it around that end. We also didn't really know where we wanted the seat to come to so we're just going to whip that off Let's have a little look On a scale of 1 to 10. Oh, we'll get it to fit and I'll bring a pencil back We just need to lose the front edge there That's all starting to look like it's working now. I'm just gonna knock a tongue of that corner of Rama off Freehand routing, here we come. Freehand routing stops right here, stops right there. So what we're going to do is kind of probably steer a little bit away from that line and we're just going to scallop out the centre here.
rolling. Action. Well, we've got our seat fitted. We've put on a clamp. Basically, this is, we're just doing a dry fit here. So we've put the uh, ratchet strap on to basically pull the whole kind of thrown around it. Um, there's just a slight little bit of sanding, which I've been saving myself because I enjoy sanding so much. So I'm just going to finish that off. And then at that point, really, we're going to, um, with the seat out, we're going to drill out in so many places to put the kind of big pins to hold the seat in place or to add more kind of stability, um, what would you say, to shore up the seat. They're also decorative. They are decorative. You know, they're decorative as much as they are actually serving a purpose. They'll hold the seat in position. Um, the thing about putting steel through oak, well, I don't know if I like that. The thing about putting a steel bolt into oak, is that better? Not this, though, none of this. So the thing, the thing about putting a steel bolt into oak is what happens is over time, the tannic acid um, in the oak will start to corrode the outside of that mild steel. And what will happen is um, not only then do you have the mechanical bond, almost like a nail being driven into timber, but you also have the chemical bond where the tannin is rotting the screw, uh, rotting the mild steel and causing it to flare up with rust. So it's a chemical and mechanical bond, um, which I think you should always try and strike for if you can. No. of you to join us. So what are we going to do today? Um, we're going to stick a bag over the top of this, probably made out of some of this plastic we've got here, um, seal the ends, stick the bag over the top of this and let it fume overnight. So that's what we're going to do today. Bomb. what would be quite cool set up the camera for the next one and do it in super kind of fast of those one of those okay that's all our bits and pieces that needs to stay on those can come out sorry camera boy always in the way i'm just trying to get the best shot screw your shots here camera boy make yourself useful stand on that good well let's hope this is the final sanding I'd probably suggest not doing this. 
six all the hate. I won't get involved today. Got lost in the ball the days. I'm flipping the balls, I'm flipping the flipping the flipping the all record off record. I still count wins when they got it on record off record. I let them take advantage. I was wildin' on record off record deals. Tell them talk to column for the quote on record off record eyes. Camera boy and I have sat and kind of talked about the finish and one thing and another, even though he's a cameraman and not really a carpenter or woodworker, so why I'm really asking him. I don't know. I should be telling him. Anyway, um, we've decided what we're going to do is a traditional finish. We're going to use some ammonia and we're going to fume this overnight. Do you want to, uh, I think I might need your help. You need my help? What yeah. for? Uh, we're just going to pop this over the top of the throne and uh, fill the trough. Oh, so you need my help now? Well, would like it. Would like it. But not need it. Oh, okay. These, luckily, came with a, probably a handmade nut, but kind of probably, more importantly, they also came with these quite cool washers. So, that saves us a little bit of time. I don't think it detracts from the finish, so, so but you could say, well, hang on a minute, you know, you made the handmade rivets, you know, why aren't you making these bolts? Well, I do think that look is very much in keeping with um, what we're trying to achieve here. So yeah, we're just going to run the same process for the, the bolts. Well, uh, I think both of us are a little bit gobsmacked, aren't we, really?
we have the circle of the throne. So sometimes what's happening is our washer's going in and then our bolt's going in and it's leaving us this much exaggerated setup like this. And then the answer came to us, of course, what we'll do is we'll just weld up the back side. So it'll be in keeping. Yeah, perfect, look at that. I'm getting rather excited. So it looks like we're doing this ridiculous thing now, so uh, off we go. Those rivets are fine, they don't dig in. Quite cosy. It's good that we did it at this height, isn't it? Because can you see these like a halo of steel around mm -hmm. my head? Saint Watson. It's a miracle. Wow. <laughs> Filling the workshop with smoke, smoke. Whew. There we go, we almost set the place on fire. That is now fitted, so you can kind of see the problem we had uh, and what we've had to do, but it's worked. No, Mark, this isn't 70s clothing, it's my welding jacket.
what we're going to do today is we're going to get this fitted onto the throne um, but what i wanted to kind of talk to people about is these little guys well i know these as drive screws but wait they're not a screw they're a nail and the thing about these drive screws or drive nails is that once they're in they are not coming out Kind of, I'm feeling something maybe like that. I like that bit. Yeah? Yeah? Yeah. Oh. You know, we're probably about two or three mil in here. The fuming seems to kind of go penetrate about two mil or so. But what an effect it's had here. I mean, it's really, particularly inside because there's more tannin in the heartwood. You know, out here, this, this is sapwood essentially, and this hasn't got uh, the tannin in it too dark enough. But inside, I mean, it's gone, it's gone like a conker. It looks absolutely brilliant. Just catching somewhere. Letting steel things in is quite cool because the steel marks the oak where it's catching. We're getting there now. There we go, nicely set in. I'll just get rid of that bit of fluff down there. Can you see, did you see them turn as they go in? We just went a little bit light on the welding. You can just see here and here. So we'll pull the welder out, we'll get those welded up and we'll get them ground off. Um, and then at that point, bang, done. Achieve exactly what we're after. I'm just painting it on there, just get a little bit on the. I mean, that you can see it kind of reacting straight away. 